Hey guys, I'm Kyler. I'm a junior here at Woodside and I'm going to be giving you guys your announcements for the junior on the night. Now, the next couple weeks are going to look a little bit differently. We're going to try to be outside as long as the weather is good and we're going to have worship, we're going to have a message, we're going to have small groups. Then next up is summer nights. That's going to be starting on June 9th and you don't want to miss that. It's going to be awesome. So, have a good night you guys. Hi, my name's Annie and I'm a junior here at Wake and I'm really just excited to share a part of my story with you. Uh, when I was 18 months old, I was adopted from China and from there I grew up in a typical Christian household with my two loving parents and my sister. Um, I grew up in a very traditional Christian household where we went to church every Sunday and you know we prayed before every meal. But as I began to grow older, it seemed that the weight of my past began to really weighed me down in middle school and I became very consumed by the idea of being very smart or popular, like feel really beautiful. Um, through that I began to find my worth in things of this world and my grades or friends. Um, there was a void that I was trying to fill there, a void that was caused by the feeling of feeling unworthy or unworthy of love um, from my parents, my family, and my friends and I allowed that to consume who I was for a really long time growing up. Um, I felt that so many things in my life were out of my control and I felt like a lot of things that had happened in my past were my fault and I felt that um, nothing I could possibly do could lift that weight off my shoulders and I really allowed myself to become very consumed by my past and not so much um, willing to pursue Christ. Um, I felt so different from everyone in my family because of the way that I looked and um, the way that adoption works is that for the most part you don't seem to know much about where you came from or who you came from and the unknowns really held me back and it became a very heavy weight on my shoulders. I allowed that weight to hinder me from fully pursuing Christ and it allowed me to build up a lot of walls in my life that also began to hinder the relationships I held with other people. I did not pursue Christ because I felt I was unworthy of a perfect God and I think I was hurt because I was abandoned, although it was someone I didn't know. Uh, that was a hurt I couldn't shake for a really long time. This not only hindered my relationship with him, but my relationship with others. And I would describe myself as a very closed off and uh, disgruntled preteen um, who just needed to experience the merciful love of the Father in heaven. And although I grew up knowing the love of the Father, I needed to really make my faith my own. And I felt that that first began when I was blessed with a small group leader who was really persistent when it came to tearing down my walls and getting to know me and showing the love of Christ to me um, throughout all of my time here at Woodside. Uh, through her, I learned how God can redeem all things. And after years of attending Woodside, I was baptized and I began to pursue God in ways that I never have before. I finally made my faith my own and God was more than just a Sunday obligation to me. He became a thing of my everyday routine. Um, it became something that I hungered for and something that I pursued daily and I finally understood what endless love felt like and what it meant and how God and the same God who created the heavens decided that he created me too. Um, which I think is the most beautiful thing that, and I think that's the most beautiful representation of love and endless love. Um, through the grace of God, I learned and I found the true beauty of love and worth, and I found that in Christ I am worthy of love, and that because of God I was adopted into the best earthly family, and more importantly, the best heavenly family. I realized that so many things happened for me to be here and living this life with these people and for that I am so grateful and prior to pursuing Christ daily I found that I have such a desire to love others and to show people the love of Christ and I found that God is capable of redeeming all things. Um, in Him there is hope and love that is something worth pursuing and following years of hurt and shame through Christ I found my worth. I found my worth in the cross and I found whose I was. I found that I was God's daughter and I found that although there are many things in my life that I don't know or I'll never know, that a promise that will always remain true is that God is the same yesterday, today and forever and in Him I find my worth. Uh, testimonies are one of my favorite things to hear and I'd love to hear all of yours. My prayer for you is that you feel worthy of a love and a God who surpasses all understanding 
and that you know whose you are and that you surrender all the things keeping you from fully pursuing him. What is up, Wake? My name is Amy Rowan. I'm a junior here in Wake, and I want to welcome you guys tonight. And I'm so excited to continue the study of Ephesians. So as we dive in, I want to ask you one question. What is armor his purpose? Its purpose is to protect, right? Armor is supposed to protect us from our enemies. And as I continue to dive into this message, we will see how Paul shows us that we have armor, but we have different armor from the rest of the people. We have the armor of your God. The armor of God, which is going to help us in those times when we have to defeat our enemies. So, if you look in your Bibles to Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic power over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of the evil and the heavenly places. Now that's something that's beautiful. It's such a powerful message. So I ask you today, are you strong in the Lord? Are you putting the full armor of God on? Because if you're leaving maybe just a little thing out, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. And are you prepared to stand against the devil if you are vulnerable in those times when you're not putting on the helmet, you're not putting on the shield, you're not taking up the sword? It leaves you vulnerable. It leaves you against things that you don't un even understand. So I want you to understand that there isn't a war against man versus man, but there's a war higher than that. There's a spiritual war. It is going on around us, and we have to be prepared to defend ourselves against that. But as we continue to get ready to defend ourselves, it only gets harder as life does. So are you more at war with yourself or the real enemy? Are you telling yourself that you are the enemy or Satan or the devil that is the real enemy. It's important that we know who our enemy is, which leads us to our first point, which is know your enemy. So are you fighting yourself and thinking that you are the enemy? If only I was prettier, if only I was, had bigger muscles or whatever it may be, telling yourself that you're the enemy, you're the root cause, is the cause that you are believing the biggest enemy it could be. But we have to know that Satan is the enemy. He is one that is bigger than all of us. There has been times that we give into the doubts of our own worth when we can't see the beauty inside of us and we break. But the Bible states that Satan is our enemy. He is the one causing it. Satan is very real. He's not just some picture that you see in a storybook. He is something that's real and he's causing battles all around us. Just as verse 11 states, the devil is scheming against us. Not only does this study show us that he is scheming against us, he knows when you're most vulnerable and that's when he plans against you and is pushing you into that hole that you can't get out of. Have you ex ever experienced Satan scheming against you? So take this moment in your small group and discuss these questions.
So as we read on, look to 1 Peter 5, 8, which it says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. This truth might sound weird, might sound scary, might sound even unreal, but I can assure you it's real. I can assure you there's hope in it. And Paul is one of the people who gives us a solution to this. A means to defend, to defend yourself against the enemies. He continues in verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having steadfast on the belt of truth and have put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as the shoes for your feet have put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, that which is the word of God. As you can see, we are called to be strong in the Lord and to put on the full armor of God. Our strength and armor will never come from us because it only will come from Christ. Paul says that if our strength isn't found in the Lord, we have no trance. That saying it's like playing tug of war on retreat and it's you against everyone. You can't win on your own. This battle is not only a physical battle, and you can't do it on your own, but it is also a spiritual battle, and you need the help of Christ to go along. The battle looks like the choices we make each day. As Christ followers, we live to be obedient in Him. Our satisfaction and joy is to be found in Him, but our enemies, the devil, wants to destroy that truth and get us to chase after everything else in the world that isn't Christ and find satisfaction in those things. But Paul tells us to stand firm. Standing firm is simply obeying and living for Christ. Standing firm starts with spending time with Christ in the Word, in Christian community, in prayer, in meditation. As, as simple as that sounds, we struggle with this every day. These small battles might start small, but they play out in our lives every day and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as our life gets busier and busier and busier our time with the lord might get smaller we might not have the time like we did a few weeks ago but if we remember that that time is important and we set aside that time to be with christ we will find something that will fill us up and people will see something that's different inside of you and you will see something different inside of you. So remember to stand firm when these battles come. If the battle might be lashing out with parents, starting gossip, be getting mad at friends, whatever it may be, remember to stand firm. These small battles might seem small, but there are ways that Satan can get a hold of you. There are ways that Satan can push you down into a deep hole that you feel like you can't get out of. So if you are not careful, you can stay there. Your heart will yearn for those things that are unchristlike. They'll crave it. They'll want it more and more and more. So remember to stand firm with Christ. So I ask you, are you standing firm? What is leading you to get knocked down? What is making you stumble? So I want you to talk with your small group again for these few moments.
So Paul lays out what we have to do to make sure that we stand firm. He says, put on the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Going into a physical battle without armor would be irresponsible and you would be basically planning to die. You'd be completely defenseless in your battles and we need armor. And Paul tells us how to put on that armor. We won't have time to unpack the depths of what the armor means, but I want you guys to understand the simple importance of these pieces. Paul begins with the belt of truth. We need you to know the truth. The truth doesn't come from our favorite influencer, our best friends, the so-called cool kids. But Paul reminds us before anything else, our identity of truth needs to be rooted in Christ alone. Next he says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness means being right with God in every single way so we can be seen as holy in his sight. This is only possible through the blood of Jesus and he is living in us. And it's a reminder that Christ is from God alone. And when the enemy speaks lies over you, it's a reminder that your identity is in Christ, not the world. The breastplate keeps those words from sticking to our hearts. What's next? The shoes. It's the gospel. The gospel is what should give us peace. It's the story of Christ. Shoes are what keeps us standing firm when things get slick, when things get hard and there's things in our path. It gives us the ability to stand firm when we need to do what is right. Paul moves on to the shield, which is all about our faith. This part of the scripture gets intense. It says we need the shield because in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. The enemy is shooting in us. And in order for us to defend it, we have to put on the full armor of God. Our faith defends us from a loneliness, doubt, and temptation. Our faith is who Christ is and who he says we are. The last piece of armor is the helmet, the helmet of salvation. This is such a great reminder of God's love for us. Christ is always there for us, so who can be against us? We have the ultimate power to help protect our minds. Lastly is the sword, which is the word of God. Look at this, not only does God give us all the armor that allows us to defend ourselves, but he gives us the sword, which allows us not only to defend ourselves, but also a means to give offense, meaning that we can fight against us. We can give different ways that we can speak out in the word. The word of God is powerful. Knowing scripture helps when temptation comes, when Satan comes saying, you're not good enough, sin, no big deal, or your opinion, that doesn't matter. The power of the Spirit through the Word of God is to help us fight in the moments and remind us that we know it is true and we can defend the Word of God when people come to us in doubt. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Spirit pierces our hearts through the Word of God. It reveals our shame and our brokenness and leads us to repentance and truth. Like a sword and any weapon, for that matter, it also takes time and practice to know exactly how to work it. So, you know those sports that you think, oh, I'm going to be great at. I can do that easy peasy. They can do it. I can do it but then you try it, then it's a different story. So just like that, it took time to, oh, now I can do it. So I've played soccer for, I don't know, seven years, and I'm still not great at it, but I practiced and I've gotten better and better. Just like 
it takes time and practice to get to know and get to be good at a sport. It's the same way for the Word of God. It takes time and practice to be consistent in prayer and reading and meditation, whatever it may be, to get in the Word for you. So you have to be dedicated. Satan is constantly looking to attack you, especially in the dark moments in your life, when you feel alone, when you feel like you have no friends, family, and Christ is absent. You feel like no one understands what you're going through. Satan looks at you and looks at people like you who are knocked down and telling you to stay there. They say, you're there, stay there. What's, you don't have a point to get up. Your life has no purpose. I want to challenge you tonight to open your eyes. You may not physically see how Satan tries to knock you down, but keep your eyes open to the areas where Satan may just be working. Don't lose hope while doing so. Remember the call of Paul. It will not be easy by any means, but you need to know you are at war, but you are not alone. You are loved. You are created in God's image. It is because of these truths you are equipped. You need to become a spiritual warrior. Take on the Christian faith. It is not an easy path, but it is a path worth following. Taking on the Christian faith is not an easy path, but it is a path worth following. Through all of this, Paul says we need to put this on daily. You can't leave something out because that, if you leave a part of the armor out, it leaves you vulnerable. And in that time, that is where Satan is going to attack. So that means we need to wake up putting it on, knowing that there's a battle coming for us. So how will you respond? Will you be prepared? Like a soldier, we need training, discipline, and routine. I challenge you tonight to look at ways you can add these to your life to make it a lifestyle. Don't leave it out because as you do so, you're going to leave yourself vulnerable if you don't continuously be disciplined in the Word. Because once you become disciplined and it becomes a part of your routine, you'll find hope you'll find strength, and you'll be find something that is beyond yourself. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this community that we can constantly come back here every single day, that we can be strong in you. We can remember, this is how we put on the armor of God. This is how I can be strong in you, Lord. So remind us every single day why we get in the scripture, why we do the things we do, Give us these little reminders and remind us it is not a us versus us battle. It is us against Satan. It is the world he, that he is trying to devour us. He is trying to cut us down. So let us remember that you are there for us. You are our strength, not us. So thank you and let us have a great rest of our day. In Jesus' name, 